While Enoch was resting in his bed, sleeping, two extraordinary figures suddenly appeared beside him, greater than any men he had ever encountered on earth. Their faces radiated like the brightness of the sun, and their eyes burned like blazing lamps. From their mouths fire seemed to emerge, and their garments shimmered with what looked like feathers. Their arms, adorned with golden wings, glowed beside his bedside. They called to him softly, Enoch, Enoch. Startled, he awoke from his slumber, and they spoke with gentle assurance. Be of good cheer, Enoch, and do not be afraid. The everlasting God has sent us to you, and today you shall ascend with us into the heavens. They lifted him up, placing him upon their wings and together they soared above the earth, carried by the clouds. Higher and higher they ascended, past the air, and still further into the realm of the ether, until they reached the first heaven. There the Elohim revealed to Enoch the human and divine mysteries, and he also learned about the moment when the angels had fallen. As humanity grew and multiplied in those days, Many beautiful daughters were born to them. The angels, the children of heaven, saw these women and were filled with desire. They said to each other, Let's choose wives from among the daughters of men and have children with them. Semjaza, their leader, hesitated and said, I'm afraid you won't all follow through with this plan, and I alone will be left to bear the great punishment for this sin. But they all responded, Let's swear an oath together and bind ourselves to this plan so no one backs out. So they all swore together, binding themselves with a solemn promise. There were two hundred of them in total, and they descended to earth during the days of Jared, landing on the summit of Mount Hermon. They named it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves with an oath there. These are the names of their leaders. Semiazaz, their chief, Arakiba, Ramel, Kokabiel, Tamiel, Ramiel, Danel, Ezekiel, Barakijal, Asael, Armaros, Batarel, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsapel, Satarel, Turel, Jomjael, and Sariel. These were their captains, each commanding groups of ten. Together with these leaders, the rest of the angels took wives from among the women of earth. Each chose one, and they entered into them defiling themselves. They taught these women magic spells, charms, root-cutting, and introduced them to the knowledge of plants. The women became pregnant and gave birth to enormous giants whose height reached thousands of feet. These giants consumed all of humanity's resources, and when humans could no longer provide for them, the giants turned against humanity and began to devour them. They sinned against birds, beasts, reptiles, and fish, and even began to eat each other's flesh and drink blood. The earth itself cried out, accusing the lawless ones. Azazel taught humanity how to make swords, knives, shields, and breastplates. He revealed the secrets of metals, how to work with them, and introduced the crafting of bracelets, ornaments, and the use of antimony. He also taught the art of beautifying the eyes, the value of precious stones, and the use of dyes. Wickedness spread like wildfire. 
people indulged in sin, committed fornication, and became thoroughly corrupt in their ways. Semjazar taught the knowledge of enchantments and root-cutting, Amaros taught how to undo spells, Barakijal shared the secrets of astrology, Kokabel taught about constellations, Ezekiel revealed the knowledge of clouds, Arakiel explained the signs of the earth, Shamsiel revealed the signs of the sun, and Sariel taught the course of the moon. As humanity perished under the weight of their corruption, their cries of suffering rose up to heaven. Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven, and what they saw broke their hearts. Blood flowed across the earth, and lawlessness spread like a plague. They turned to each other in despair and said, The earth, once peaceful and uninhabited, now cries out with the voices of the suffering. Their cries have reached the very gates of heaven, begging for justice. The souls of humanity were pleading to the holy ones in heaven, asking, Please take our case before the Most High. In anguish the angel spoke to the Lord, saying, O Lord of lords, God above all gods, King of kings, your glorious throne has stood for all generations, and your name is holy and blessed forever. You are the creator of everything, and all things are under your control. Nothing can be hidden from you, for you see all. You see what Azazel has done, how he has led the world into darkness, teaching humanity forbidden knowledge, secrets that were meant to stay in heaven. And Semjaza, who was given authority over his followers, has led them to earth. They have taken human women for themselves, defiling them, and through their sin the women gave birth to giants. Now the earth is soaked in blood and filled with evil. The souls of the dead cry out to heaven, and their sorrowful voices cannot be silenced. They weep for justice, for the terrible wrongs that are being committed on earth. And you, Lord, you know everything before it happens. You see this devastation, but we don't understand why you allow it. You haven't told us what to do. Then the Most High, the Holy and Great One, finally spoke. His voice thundered with authority, and he sent Uriel to the son of Lamech. Go to Noah, he commanded, and tell him, In my name hide yourself. The end is near. The whole earth is about to be destroyed by a great flood. Everything will be wiped out. Tell him so he may escape and his descendants may survive, to carry on the generations of the world. Then the Lord turned to Raphael and said, Go, find Azazel, bind his hands and feet, cast him into the darkness, into the desert of Dudael, dig a deep pit and throw him inside, pile jagged rocks over him, let him remain there, buried in darkness, so he may never see the light again. He will stay there forever, and on the day of final judgment he will be thrown into the eternal fire. But now heal the earth. Cleanse it from the corruption brought by the angels. Announce the healing of the land, so that not all humanity will perish from the secrets the watchers revealed. The whole earth has been ruined by what Azazel taught, so let him bear the weight of all sin. The Lord spoke to Gabriel with a heavy command, Go forth against the unholy offspring, the rebellious and corrupt. Destroy the children born from sin, the children of the fallen watchers. Set them against each other. Let them battle and wipe each other out, for their days are numbered, and they will not live long. He continued, And as for their fathers, the watchers, let no plea they make on behalf of their children be heard. They had hoped for eternal life, thinking their offspring might live for five hundred years, but their hopes will be shattered. Then the Lord turned to Michael and said, Bind Semjaza and his companions those who have tainted themselves by uniting with women and defiling their purity. When they witness their sons killing each other and see the destruction of those they love, bind them tight in the depths of the earth. They will remain there, imprisoned for seventy generations, until the final judgment, until the day of reckoning that will last forever. On that day they will be thrown into the fiery abyss, into torment and eternal imprisonment, where they shall never be free. Anyone condemned to destruction will be bound with them, sharing their fate for all generations to come. 
Wipe away the spirits of the corrupt and the children of the watchers, for they have wronged humanity. Let all wickedness be cleansed from the face of the earth, and let righteousness and truth take root. Let it be a blessing, a new beginning, where justice and joy will grow forever. The Lord promised, the righteous will survive, they will thrive, and live long enough to have thousands of descendants. They will live in peace, from their youth to their old age, without fear or sorrow. The earth will be tended with righteousness, flourishing with trees and overflowing with blessings. The most desirable trees will cover the land, vines will yield an abundance of wine, and the seeds sown in the ground will bear a thousandfold. Even a small measure of olives will produce ten presses of oil. Cleanse the earth from all oppression, from every form of evil, sin, and godlessness. Wipe away the filth that has tainted it. Then all the children of humanity will become righteous. Every nation will adore and praise me, and all will worship. The earth will be purified from all defilement, sin, punishment, and torment. Never again will I send such suffering upon it from generation to generation forevermore. In those days I will open the heavenly storehouses of blessings and rain them down upon the earth, rewarding the work and toil of humanity. Truth and peace will walk hand in hand, lasting throughout all the days of the world and across every generation of humankind. Before these events, Enoch had disappeared hidden away from humanity. No one knew where he had gone or what had become of him. Enoch's life was intertwined with the Watchers, and he spent his days among the Holy Ones. I, Enoch, bless the Lord of Majesty, the King of all ages. And then the Watchers summoned me, Enoch, the scribe. They called to me and said, Enoch, you scribe of righteousness. Go and deliver this message to the watchers of heaven, those who abandoned their holy and eternal dwelling, who defiled themselves by uniting with women, and behaved like the children of earth. You have brought great destruction to the world. You will have no peace, no forgiveness for your sins. Though you cherish your children, you will witness their violent deaths. You will cry out and lament over their destruction for all eternity, but peace and mercy will never be yours. Enoch went to Azazel, the fallen one, and with a voice firm and resolute he said, Azazel, you will know no peace. A harsh and unyielding sentence has already been passed against you, and you will be bound by it for eternity. You will find no mercy, no request will be granted to you. All this is because of the wickedness you have taught mankind, the ungodly ways and sinful acts you revealed to them. Enoch then gathered all the fallen watchers and spoke to them together. A deep fear took hold of them, and they trembled, gripped by terror. Desperate, they pleaded with Enoch, asking him to write a petition for them, to beg for forgiveness on their behalf. They hoped he could read their plea in the presence of the Lord of Heaven, for they could no longer lift their faces to the heavens in shame, unable to speak to him after being condemned for their sins. Their guilt weighed down on them like chains. So Enoch did as they asked. He wrote their plea for forgiveness, carefully recording each of their spirit's desires and their deeds, asking for mercy and the extension of their days. Afterward, Enoch went to the waters of Dan, in the land of Dan, to the south and west of Mount Hermon. There, by the water's edge, he read their petition, pouring out their sorrow, until exhaustion overcame him and he fell asleep. And as he slept, visions came crashing down upon him, vivid and filled with judgment. A voice echoed in his dream, commanding him to bring this message to the sons of heaven and rebuke them for their actions. When Enoch awoke, he returned to the watchers. They were gathered together, weeping in a place called Abelzjail, between the mountains of Lebanon and Senezer, their faces hidden in grief and despair. With solemn authority, 
Enoch recounted to them all the visions he had seen while he slept, and there, among their tears, he began to speak words of righteousness, rebuking the fallen watchers for their transgressions. This is the book of righteousness, containing the words of reprimand to the eternal watchers, as commanded by the Holy Great One through the vision he revealed to me. In the midst of my sleep, I saw these things, and I now speak them aloud with my human tongue, using the breath given by the Great One to mankind, to communicate and to understand in our hearts. Just as he gave man the power to comprehend wisdom, so too has he given me the power to rebuke the watchers, the once holy children of heaven. I wrote out your petition, and in my vision I saw the truth. Your request will not be granted, not now, not ever. Judgment has been passed upon you for all eternity. From this moment on, you shall never ascend to heaven again. You will remain bound to the earth, confined in its depths, for all the days of the world's existence. Before this, you will witness the destruction of your beloved sons. You will have no joy in them. They will perish before your eyes, cut down by the sword. Even if you weep, even if you pray and utter all the words I have written, your pleas for their forgiveness, and your own, will not be heard. And then, in my vision, I was taken by clouds that beckoned me, and a mist surrounded me. The stars and lightning sped me forward, and the winds lifted me, carrying me into the heavens. As I was borne upward, I neared a towering wall made of pure crystal, surrounded by tongues of fire. Fear gripped me. I entered through the fiery tongues and saw before me a grand house made entirely of crystal, with walls shimmering like the tessellated floor beneath my feet, also of crystal. The foundation, too, gleamed with the same brilliance. The ceiling resembled the starry sky streaked with lightning, and between the lightning I saw fiery cherubim. The heaven above was as clear as water. Flames blazed around the house, and its doors were consumed with fire. As I stepped inside I was overwhelmed. It was as hot as fire, but as cold as ice. There was no joy in this place, only dread. Fear took hold of me, and my whole body trembled. Trembling uncontrollably, I collapsed, face down on the ground. Then, as I lay prostrate, I saw another house, even greater than the first. Its enormous gate stood open, and it was built from flames of fire. Its splendor and magnificence were beyond words, far surpassing anything I could ever describe. The floor of this house was a river of fire, and above it were the stars and lightning. The ceiling, too, blazed with flames. There, at the heart of it all, I saw a throne, towering and majestic. It gleamed like crystal, and its wheels shone like the burning sun, surrounded by cherubim. Streams of fire poured from beneath the throne, so fierce I could not bear to look directly at it. Upon that throne sat the great glory. His robe was brighter than the sun, purer than the whitest snow. Not even the angels could enter or behold his face, so great was his majesty and splendor. No mortal could bear to gaze upon him. Flames encircled him, and a vast fire burned before him. No one dared approach him. Yet before him stood ten thousand times ten thousand, though he required no counsel. The holiest one stood by him, never leaving his side, neither by day nor night. Still trembling, I lay with my face to the ground, unable to move. Then the Lord called to me with his own voice, saying, Come, Enoch, and listen to my words. One of the holy ones came to me, awakening me gently. He lifted me up, guiding me towards the entrance. With my face bowed low, I obeyed. And he answered me, his voice strong and full of power. Do not be afraid, Enoch, righteous man and faithful scribe of truth. Come closer and hear my words. Go and tell the watchers of heaven, who have sent you to plead for them. It is not men who should plead for you, but you who should have interceded for men. 
Why did you abandon the high, holy, and eternal heaven? Why did you lay with women, deafling yourselves with the daughters of men, taking them as wives, and giving birth to giants, your corrupted sons? Though you were once pure spiritual beings who lived eternal lives, you stained yourselves with the blood of women and produced children of flesh. You craved the desires of mortal flesh and blood, like those who die and fade away. I gave men wives so they could bear children and ensure nothing was lacking on the earth. But you were not like them. You were once spiritual, living eternally, never destined for death. And thus, I did not give you wives, for the spiritual dwell in heaven, not on earth. But now the giants, your offspring born of spirits and flesh, shall be called evil spirits on the earth, and here shall be their cursed home. From their bodies, evil spirits have come forth. Their origin lies with you, the fallen watchers. These evil spirits will dwell among men, bringing havoc upon the earth. These spirits will be called evil, because they come from both human and heavenly flesh. They belong to neither, yet they shall torment both. The spirits of the heavenly beings remain in heaven, but the spirits born from the earth, from your sin, shall remain bound to it forever. These spirits of the giants shall bring suffering. They afflict, oppress, destroy, and make war. They do not need food, but are ever hungry and thirsty. Their endless cravings cause misery, and they will rise up against men and women, for they are born of both. Since the days when the giants were slain, their spirits have wandered the earth, destructive, rebellious, and relentless. They shall continue to torment until the day of the final judgment, when all will be brought to an end, both for the watchers and the godless alike. It is on that day that the age will be fully completed. Now regarding the watchers who sent you to intercede on their behalf, tell them this. Yes, you once dwelled in heaven, but not all the mysteries were revealed to you. Instead, you grasped at knowledge. In the hardness of your hearts, you made these hidden things known to women. Through this, men and women alike now commit great evil on the earth. Therefore, tell them, you shall find no peace, neither in heaven nor on earth. Enoch was taken to a place where those who dwelled there blazed like flames of fire. But when they wished, they could appear as men. Enoch was brought to a vast mountain whose summit stretched up to the very heavens. He saw the places where the stars and lights of the sky are kept, and the deepest depths where thunder, lightning, and fiery weapons, arrows, and a flaming sword, are stored. He was led to living waters, and to the blazing fire in the west, where the sun sets each evening. Enoch came to a river of fire, its flames flowing like water, pouring into the great western sea. He saw the great rivers of the world and journeyed into the darkness, to a place where no living creature can walk. He beheld the mountains covered in winter's shadow, and the source from which the waters of the deep flow. He saw the mouths of every river, and the entrance to the vast depths below. Enoch saw the storerooms of all the winds, and observed how they were arranged to shape creation, and lay the strong foundation of the earth. He saw the cornerstone of the earth and the four winds that uphold both the earth and the sky. He watched how the winds spread out the skies, standing between heaven and earth like the pillars that support the heavens. He saw the heavenly winds that turn the sun and guide the stars in their paths. He saw the winds on earth carrying the clouds and the pathways of angels. At the edge of the earth he saw the sky above. He went further and saw a place burning day and night with seven magnificent mountains, three to the east and three to the south. The eastern mountains were made of colorful stone, pearl, and jacinth, while the southern mountains were of red stone. The central mountain rose high into the heavens like God's throne, made of pure alabaster with a sapphire summit. Flames burned before him. 
and beyond these mountains lay the end of the earth. He saw where the heavens were completed. There was a deep abyss, filled with columns of heavenly fire, stretching beyond what he could measure in both height and depth. Beyond that abyss he saw a place with no sky above and no solid ground below, an empty, desolate wasteland. There he saw seven stars burning like great mountains and asked it about them. The angel told him, This is the end of heaven and earth. This is the prison of the stars and the heavenly beings. These stars, which roll over the fire, are those who disobeyed the Lord's command. They failed to rise when they were supposed to. Because of their disobedience, he became angry with them and bound them here until the time when their guilt will be fully judged, even for ten thousand years. Uriel said to Enoch, Here will stand the angels who defiled themselves by taking human women. Their spirits now take many forms, leading mankind astray and causing them to worship demons as gods. Here they shall remain until the great day of judgment, when they will finally be destroyed. The women who are led astray by these angels will become sirens, calling men to their doom. And Enoch alone saw this vision, the end of all things. No other man shall witness what he has seen. Enoch continued his journey with the holy angels, who revealed the mysteries of the universe to him. He was introduced to the celestial guardians who oversee humanity. These are the names of the holy angels, Enoch began. Uriel, who oversees the world and the depths of Tartarus. Raphael, who watches over the spirits of men. Raguel, who takes vengeance on the world of the luminaries. Michael, who is set over the best part of humanity and over chaos. Sarakael, who is set over the spirits of those who sin in spirit. Gabriel, who watches over paradise, the serpents, and the cherubim. Remiel, whom God has set over those who rise from the dead. Enoch was then taken to a place where all was chaos. He saw something terrifying. There was neither heaven above nor a firmly founded earth below only a place of total disorder and horror. In that place, he saw seven stars bound together in this chaotic space, burning like giant mountains of fire. Enoch asked, For what sin are these stars bound? Why have they been cast here? Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with him and was chief over them, replied, Enoch, why do you ask? Why are you so eager to know the truth? These stars are among those that transgress the commandment of the Lord. They are bound here until the ten thousand years of their sin have been fulfilled. Enoch was then taken to another place, even more dreadful than the first. There he saw an immense fire that blazed and burned, cleaving down to the abyss, filled with enormous columns of fire. Its vastness was beyond his understanding. He said, how terrifying this place is, how awful it is to look upon. Uriel, the holy angel, responded, Enoch, why are you so frightened? Enoch replied, Because of this fearful place and the sight of such intense pain. Uriel said to him, This is the prison of the angels, where they will be held forever. Enoch was then taken to another place, and Uriel showed him a great and high mountain in the west, made of solid rock. Inside it were four hollow places, deep, wide, and incredibly smooth. They were dark and frightening to behold. Raphael, one of the holy angels who was with him, explained, These hollow places have been created for the spirits of the dead, so that all the souls of the children of men may gather here. These places will hold them until the day of their judgment, when the appointed time for them will come. Enoch saw the spirits of the children of men who had died, and their voices rose up to heaven, pleading for justice. He asked Raphael, Whose spirit is this that cries out so desperately? Raphael answered, This is the spirit of Abel, whom his brother Cain murdered. His voice cries out for vengeance until Cain's descendants are destroyed from the face of the earth. 
Enoch then asked about the different hollow places. Why are they separated? Raphael responded, These three divisions have been made to separate the spirits of the righteous from the sinners. In one of these places there is a bright spring of water for the righteous. Another has been set aside for sinners who died without facing judgment during their lifetime. Here, their spirits will be held in great pain until the day of judgment, when they will face their punishment and torment. There, they will be bound forever, and their spirits will know no peace. A third division has been made for those who cry out for vengeance, whose lives were cut short by the wicked. And another is for the spirits of men who were sinners, wholly corrupt in their transgressions. They shall remain together in torment, but they will not be destroyed on the day of judgment, nor will they ever rise again. Enoch then blessed the Lord of glory and said, Blessed be the Lord, the Lord of righteousness, who rules forever. He then journeyed to a place west of the ends of the earth. There he beheld an unending blaze that never ceased its fiery path, day or night, continuing its relentless course without a moment's rest. Curious, he asked, what is this relentless fire? Raguel, one of the holy angels accompanying him, responded, this is the western fire you see, which relentlessly pursues all the celestial lights of heaven. Enoch travelled further to another location on the earth and was shown a range of fiery mountains that burned ceaselessly, both day and night. Moving past this, he saw seven grand mountains, each unique and splendid. Three rose majestically in the east, one above the other, and three in the south, similarly stacked, with rugged, separate ravines between them. The seventh mountain stood in their midst, towering above the others like a throne, surrounded by aromatic trees. Among these trees was one unlike any Enoch had ever encountered. Its fragrance was unmatched, and its leaves, blooms, and wood never withered. Its fruit was as beautiful as palm dates. Enoch admired the tree's beauty and its delightful fragrance, noting the loveliness of its leaves and blossoms. Michael, the revered leader of the holy angels, responded to Enoch's wonder. Michael asked Enoch, Why are you so curious about the tree's fragrance? And why do you seek the truth about it? Enoch replied, I wish to understand everything, particularly about this extraordinary tree. Michael explained, This towering mountain you see, with its summit resembling God's throne, is indeed his throne. The Holy Great One, the Lord of Glory, the Eternal King, will one day descend to earth to visit in kindness. Until the great judgment comes, no mortal is allowed to touch this fragrant tree. At that time, when divine justice is meted out and all is brought to its final state, the tree will be given to the righteous and holy. Its fruit will nourish the chosen ones, and the tree will be transplanted to the sacred place, the Lord's eternal temple. Then they will experience joy and happiness and enter the holy place. Its fragrance will enrich their being and they will live long, fulfilling lives, free from sorrow, disease, torment, or disaster, just as their ancestors did. Enoch then praised the God of glory, the Eternal King, who had prepared such blessings for the righteous and promised to bestow them. Enoch travelled to the heart of the earth and discovered a blessed place with ever-blooming trees. There he saw a sacred mountain with a stream flowing eastward towards the south. To the east he noticed another mountain, taller than the first, separated by a deep, narrow ravine with a stream running beneath it. To the west a lower mountain was situated, separated by a dry, deep ravine, with another similar ravine at the ends of the three mountains. All these ravines were narrow and deep, carved from solid rock, and devoid of trees. Enoch marveled at the rocks and the ravines, astonished by their formidable appearance. He wondered aloud, What is the purpose of this blessed land, filled with trees, and the cursed valley in between? Uriel explained, This cursed valley is reserved for those eternally condemned. 
It is the gathering place for those who have spoken blasphemies against the Lord and his glory. Here the accursed will face their judgment. In the end times, the righteous will witness this scene of divine judgment, and the merciful will bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. On the day of judgment, they will praise him for his mercy, which determined their fate. Enoch then praised the Lord of glory, celebrating his divine majesty and grace. Enoch journeyed east into the heart of a mountainous desert and discovered a desolate wilderness teeming with trees and plants. Water flowed abundantly from above, rushing northwest and creating clouds and dew that spread in all directions. Continuing east, Enoch arrived at another desert location. There, he saw aromatic trees emitting the sweet scents of frankincense and myrrh, similar to almond trees. Further east, Enoch came upon a valley filled with water. In this valley stood a tree with a fragrance akin to mastic. Along the valley sides, he saw fragrant cinnamon trees and moved on further east. Enoch discovered new mountains, where he found groves of trees producing nectar known as Sarara and Galbanum. Beyond these mountains he saw another range to the east, covered with aloe trees, which were filled with stacte and resembled almond trees. When burned, the aroma of these trees surpassed any other fragrance. Looking north over the mountains, Enoch saw seven peaks abundant with precious nard, fragrant trees, cinnamon and pepper. He traversed the peaks of these mountains, journeyed east past the Erythraean Sea, and continued far beyond, passing over the angel Zotiel. He reached the Garden of Righteousness and observed many large, beautifully fragrant trees, including the Tree of Wisdom, which grants profound knowledge to those who partake. This tree was as tall as a fir, with leaves like those of the carob tree and fruit resembling vine clusters, exuding a far-reaching fragrance. Enoch marveled at the tree's beauty and allure. Raphael, the holy angel with him, explained, This is the tree of wisdom. Your aged father and mother before you ate from it and gained wisdom. Their eyes were opened and they realized their nakedness, leading to their expulsion from the garden. Enoch traveled to the farthest reaches of the earth, and encountered a variety of majestic beasts, each unique in form. He also observed birds, each distinct in appearance, beauty, and song. To the east of these creatures, he saw where the heavens touched the earth and the portals of the heavens open wide. He witnessed how the stars emerge from these portals, counting and recording each star's exit, noting their names, paths, positions, timings, and months, as shown to him by Uriel, the holy angel accompanying him. Uriel revealed and documented everything for Enoch, including the stars' names, their laws, and their groupings. Enoch then journeyed north to the edge of the earth, where he saw a magnificent sight at the very ends of the world. He observed three portals in the sky, through which northern winds emerge, bringing cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain. When the winds blow from one of these portals, they are gentle and beneficial. However, when the other two portals release their winds, they come with harshness and suffering, creating tumultuous conditions on earth. Moving west to the far reaches of the earth, Enoch saw three more heavenly portals, identical to those he had seen in the east, with the same number of openings. Enoch travelled south to the extremities of the earth and found three open heavenly portals there, from which dew, rain, and wind emerge. Returning to the east, he saw three eastern portals of heaven open, along with smaller portals above them. Through these smaller portals, the stars traverse their paths westward, following their designated routes. Each time Enoch observed these wonders, he praised the Lord of glory, celebrating his magnificent creations and the greatness of his work. He blessed the Lord for demonstrating his power to angels, spirits, and humanity, so that all might admire and honor his mighty deeds and eternal craftsmanship. 
Enoch spoke his words of blessing to the elect and righteous, those who will endure the trials of the final days, when the wicked and godless will be removed. He saw a vision of the Holy One in the heavens, revealed to him by the angels. From them, he heard and understood everything he saw. But this message is meant not for his generation, but for a future one yet to come. Regarding the elect, Enoch prophesied, The Holy Great One will emerge from his dwelling, and the Eternal God will set foot upon the earth on Mount Sinai. He will appear from his divine encampment and reveal his mighty strength from the highest heaven. All will be struck with terror. The watchers will tremble, and a profound fear will grip the earth. The lofty mountains will shake, the high hills will be flattened, and they will melt like wax before a fire. The earth will be torn apart, and all upon it will perish, with a final judgment on all humanity. Yet he will grant peace to the righteous, protect the elect, and show them mercy. They will belong to God, be prospered, and blessed. He will support them, shine light upon them, and make peace with them. Behold, he will come with thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all, to destroy the ungodly, to convict all flesh of the wicked deeds they have committed, and all the harsh words spoken against him. Observe everything that happens in the heavens, how the celestial bodies maintain their orbits, and how each luminary rises and sets precisely according to its season, never deviating from its appointed path. Look at the earth and pay attention to its consistent patterns from beginning to end. Nothing changes. All the works of God are evident. Notice how summer and winter fill the earth with water, clouds, dew, and rain. In winter, observe how trees seem to wither and shed their leaves, except for fourteen trees that retain their foliage for two to three years until new leaves come. During summer, observe how the sun remains directly overhead, causing intense heat. You seek shade from its scorching rays, and the earth becomes too hot to walk on. Watch how trees become green and bear fruit. Understand and recognize the works of God, who has made everything so. All his creations function the same year after year, performing their tasks as he has decreed, and their roles remain unchanged. Similarly, the sea and rivers follow their divine commands without altering their functions. But you have not been steadfast, nor have you followed the Lord's commandments. You have turned away and spoken harsh, prideful words against his greatness. Therefore your days will be cursed, and the years of your life will be consumed, with eternal damnation and no mercy for you. In those days your names will become an eternal curse among the righteous, and those who curse will do so in your name, the sinners, and godless will invoke curses because of you. For you, the ungodly, there will be a curse. The righteous will rejoice, finding forgiveness, mercy, peace, and salvation. They will receive a bright light. But sinners will find no salvation, only a curse will be upon them. For the elect there will be light, joy, and peace, and they will inherit the earth. Wisdom will be granted to the elect. They will live without sinning again, free from ungodliness and pride. Those who are wise will be humble. They will never transgress again. They will not face divine anger or wrath. Their days will be fulfilled in peace. Their lives will be filled with eternal joy and peace throughout all their days. Enoch, the son of Jared, grandson of Mahalalel, and descendant of Adam, shared the second vision he received, a vision of wisdom. This vision marked the beginning of Enoch's prophetic words, which he shared with the people of the earth. Listen, all you who have lived before, and those who will come after, to the messages of the Holy One spoken before the Lord of Spirits. Though it might seem fitting to reveal these truths solely to the ancients, this wisdom could not be kept from those living now or from future generations. Until this moment, such insight had never been bestowed upon anyone by the Lord of Spirits, who granted Enoch the gift of eternal life. 
Enoch had received three great parables, which he now imparted to the people on earth. A time will come when the righteous will be gathered together, and the sinners will face judgment for their deeds. They will be expelled from the earth. When the righteous one, whose actions are perfectly aligned with the Lord of Spirits, reveals himself to the righteous, a brilliant light will shine upon those chosen by God. But where will the sinners hide? Where will those who denied the Lord find rest? It would have been better for them if they had never been born. When the secrets of the righteous are unveiled and the wicked are judged, the powerful and exalted of the earth will lose their status. They will be unable to stand before the holy, for the Lord of Spirits will illuminate the faces of the righteous and the elect. The mighty rulers will perish and be handed over to the righteous and holy. From that point on, they will no longer be able to seek mercy from the Lord of Spirits, for their lives will have ended. In those days, holy and chosen children will descend from the heavens and unite with the children of men. Enoch received sacred writings filled with fervor, judgment and sorrow. Yet no mercy will be granted to the wicked, declares the Lord of Spirits. One day, a whirlwind carried Enoch away from the earth and placed him at the edge of the heavens. There, he witnessed the abodes of the holy and the resting places of the righteous. He saw how they prayed and interceded for humankind, with righteousness flowing like an endless river and mercy descending like gentle dew upon the earth. This state of righteousness and mercy will endure forever. In that sacred place, Enoch saw the Chosen One, the embodiment of righteousness and faith, whose dwelling was under the protection of the Lord of Spirits. His reign would be marked by justice, and the number of the righteous who stood before him would be countless, lasting forever. These righteous ones would shine like blazing lights, their mouths filled with blessings, and their lips ever praising the name of the Lord of Spirits. Righteousness would never fade from their presence. Enoch yearned to dwell in this place, his spirit longing for this divine realm. It had always been his destined portion, established by the Lord of Spirits. During that time, Enoch praised and exalted the name of the Lord of Spirits, recognizing his own blessing and glory as a result of divine will. For a long time, Enoch's eyes were fixed on that holy place, and he blessed and praised God, declaring, Blessed is he, and may he be blessed from the very beginning until the end of time. There is no end before him, for he knows all things from before creation and throughout every generation. The eternal beings who never sleep stood before his glory and continually sang his praises. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of spirits who fills the earth with spirits. Enoch saw these ageless beings always awake, always blessing, and saying, Blessed be thou, and blessed be the name of the Lord for ever and ever. As Enoch beheld this vision, his face changed, overwhelmed by its radiance, and he could no longer endure the sight. After this, Enoch saw an innumerable multitude, thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand, standing before the Lord of Spirits. Surrounding the Lord on all four sides were four distinct presences, different from the eternal beings Enoch had seen before. An angel who accompanied him revealed their names and showed him all the hidden truths. The voices of these four presences rang out in praise before the Lord of Glory. The first voice praised the Lord of Spirits eternally. The second voice blessed the elect one and the chosen ones who rely on the Lord of Spirits. The third voice prayed and interceded for the people on earth, pleading in the name of the Lord of Spirits. The fourth voice stood firm against the Satans, preventing them from accusing the people of the earth before the Lord of Spirits. Enoch then asked the Angel of Peace, who had shown him all these hidden things, Who are these four presences whose words I have heard and recorded? The angel responded, The first is Michael, the compassionate and patient one. The second is Raphael, who oversees all diseases and wounds of humanity. 
The third is Gabriel, who is in charge of all the powers. The fourth is Fanuel, who oversees the repentance and hope of those who will inherit eternal life. These are the four angels of the Lord of Spirits, and the voices you heard in those days. Next, Enoch saw all the secrets of the heavens, how the kingdom is organized, and how the actions of people are measured. He observed the homes of the elect and the holy, and witnessed sinners being expelled from these sacred places for denying the name of the Lord of Spirits. They were dragged away, unable to remain due to the punishment that came from the Lord of Spirits. Enoch also saw the secrets of lightning and thunder, the division of the winds as they blow across the earth, and the mysteries of clouds and dew. He observed their origins and how they saturate the dry earth. He saw the chambers where the winds are divided, including the chambers of hail, mist and clouds, which have hovered over the earth since the world began. He witnessed the chambers of the sun and moon, observing their paths and their glorious returns. He saw how one is superior to the other and their majestic orbits, noting that they never stray from their paths. They neither add to nor subtract from their courses, and remain faithful to their celestial oath. The sun follows its path according to the command of the Lord of Spirits, whose name is mighty forever. Enoch also saw the hidden and visible paths of the moon, which completes its course day and night. Both sun and moon, positioned opposite each other before the Lord of Spirits, give thanks and praise without rest. Their very existence is a testament to their thanksgiving. The sun brings either blessing or curse, while the moon's path brings light to the righteous and darkness to the sinners, as decreed by the Lord, who separated light from darkness. He divides the spirits of men, strengthens the spirits of the righteous, and judges all with his righteousness. No angel or power can hinder this divine order. All are judged before him. Wisdom, initially unable to find a dwelling place, was eventually given a home in the heavens. When wisdom sought to reside among humanity, she found no suitable place and returned to her celestial realm, taking her seat among the angels. Meanwhile, unrighteousness emerged from her chambers, seeking but failing to find a place among the righteous. Instead, unrighteousness settled among those who were lost, like rain in a desert or dew on parched land. Enoch witnessed an awe-inspiring sight, countless flashes of lightning and stars of the heavens, all called by their names, responding to the Lord of Spirits. He observed how these celestial bodies were weighed in a just balance according to their light, and how their distances, appearances and revolutions were meticulously measured. Their movements, synchronized with the number of angels, demonstrated their faithful coordination. Curious about these celestial phenomena, Enoch inquired of the angel who accompanied him, What are these? The angel replied, The Lord of Spirits has shown you their symbolic meaning. These are the names of the holy ones who dwell on earth, and remain steadfast in their faith in the Lord of Spirits forever. Enoch saw another remarkable sight concerning the lightning. Some stars transformed into lightning and remained in this new form permanently, unable to return to their original state. Enoch began recounting the second parable, addressing those who reject the sacred dwelling places of the Holy Ones and the Lord of Spirits. Such individuals will never ascend to heaven, nor find peace on earth. This is their fate. Those who have denied the name of the Lord of Spirits are reserved for a day of great suffering and tribulation. On that day, the elect one will sit upon the throne of glory and judge their deeds. Their resting places will be countless, and their souls will find strength as they witness the elect ones and those who have called upon the glorious name of the Lord. Then the elect one will dwell among them. The heavens will be transformed into a realm of eternal blessing and light, and the earth will be made a place of blessing. The elect ones will inhabit it, while sinners and wrongdoers will be barred from entering. The righteous will be given peace and will dwell in the presence of the Lord, but for the sinners judgment awaits. They will be eradicated from the earth.
In Enoch's vision, he saw a figure with a head of days, whose hair was white as wool. Accompanying this figure was another being with a countenance like that of a man, radiating grace akin to the holy angels. Enoch asked the angel who guided him about this son of man, who he was, where he came from, and why he accompanied the head of days. The angel explained, This is the son of man who embodies righteousness. He possesses righteousness, reveals hidden treasures, and has been chosen by the Lord of Spirits. His place of honor before the Lord of Spirits is eternal and upright. This son of man will topple kings and mighty rulers from their thrones, shatter the power of the strong, and destroy the wicked. Those who fail to praise and acknowledge the origin of their power will be cast down. Their faces will be filled with shame, and they will dwell in darkness and decay with no hope of redemption, because they did not honor the name of the Lord of Spirits. These are the ones who judge the stars of heaven, rebel against the Most High, and tread upon the earth with their unrighteous deeds. Their power is based on their wealth, their faith rests in the gods they have made with their own hands, and they deny the name of the Lord of Spirits. They also persecute the congregations and faithful who rely on the Lord's name. In those days the prayers of the righteous and the cries of the innocent blood shed upon the earth will rise before the Lord of Spirits. The holy ones dwelling in the heavens will unite their voices in a powerful chorus of supplication, prayer, praise, and gratitude, seeking that the blood of the righteous and their prayers not be in vain. They will plead for justice to be done and for the righteous to be spared from eternal suffering. Enoch saw the head of days take his place on the throne of glory, where the books of the living were opened before him. All the heavenly host and his counsellors stood in his presence. The hearts of the holy were filled with joy, because the number of the righteous had been fulfilled, their prayers heard, and their blood accounted for before the Lord of Spirits. In that vision, Enoch beheld an endless fountain of righteousness, surrounded by many fountains of wisdom. All who thirsted came to drink from these fountains and were filled with wisdom. They found their homes among the righteous, holy, and elect. At that moment, the Son of Man was named in the presence of the Lord of Spirits and before the Head of Days. Even before the sun and the celestial signs were created, and before the stars of heaven were formed, his name was established before the Lord of Spirits. He will serve as a support for the righteous, guiding them to stand firm and not fall. He will be a beacon of light for the Gentiles and a source of hope for the troubled. All who dwell on earth will bow before him, praising and blessing the Lord of Spirits. This Son of Man has been chosen and concealed before the creation of the world and will remain so forever. The wisdom of the Lord of Spirits has revealed him to the holy and righteous, as he has preserved their lot. They have scorned this world of unrighteousness and its ways in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Through his name they are saved, according to the divine will for their lives. Wisdom will flow like water, and his glory will never fade. He is mighty in all the secrets of righteousness, and unrighteousness will vanish like a shadow without lasting power. The elect one stands eternally before the Lord of Spirits, his glory everlasting, and his strength enduring through all generations. In him resides the spirit of wisdom, insight, understanding, and strength, as well as the spirit of those who have fallen asleep in righteousness. He will judge the hidden matters, and no lie will be spoken before him, for he is the elect one before the Lord of Spirits, chosen by divine will. In those days, a transformation will occur for the holy and elect. The light of days will shine upon them, and glory and honor will be theirs on the day when evil has been amassed against the sinners. The righteous will triumph in the name of the Lord of Spirits, and others will witness this, leading them to repentance and renouncement of their sinful deeds. Although these others will not gain honor through the name of the Lord of Spirits, 
they will be saved through his name. The Lord of Spirits will show them great compassion, for his compassion knows no bounds. His judgment will be just, and in his glorious presence unrighteousness will not endure. The unrepentant will perish before him. From this point forward, the Lord of Spirits declares, he will show no mercy to them. In those days, the earth will return everything it has been given, Sheol will release all it has taken, and hell will pay back what it owes. For during that time, the elect one will rise up, and he will choose the righteous and holy from among them. The moment of their salvation is at hand. The elect one will then take his seat on the throne of the Lord of Spirits, and his words will reveal all the deep secrets of wisdom and guidance, for the Lord of Spirits has granted him these truths and has exalted him. In those days, even the mountains will dance with joy like rams, and the hills will leap like lambs basking in milk. The faces of all the heavenly angels will shine with uncontainable joy. The earth will burst into rejoicing, and the righteous will find their home upon it, while the chosen ones will walk freely upon its surface. After those days in the place where the visions of hidden things had been seen, after being swept away in a whirlwind towards the west, there were revealed the secret treasures of heaven, a mountain of iron, a mountain of copper, a mountain of silver, a mountain of gold, a mountain of soft metal, and a mountain of lead. Enoch asked the angel accompanying him, What are these things I have seen in secret? The angel answered, These things you have seen are destined to serve the reign of his anointed, so that he may wield great power and might upon the earth. The angel of peace then said, Wait a moment, and you will be shown all the hidden things that surround the Lord of Spirits. The mountain seen, the iron mountain, the copper mountain, the silver mountain, the gold mountain, the soft metal mountain, and the lead mountain, will become as fragile as wax before. A fire, and as malleable as water pouring down, they will lose all their strength in the presence of the elect one. It will come to pass in those days that no one will find salvation through gold or silver, and none will escape. All will be powerless. There will be no iron for battle, no armor to protect. Bronze will be useless, tin will be worthless, and lead will be rejected. All these things will vanish and be destroyed from the earth's surface when the elect one appears before the Lord of Spirits. A deep, gaping valley was seen where all who live on earth, sea, and islands would bring gifts, tributes, and tokens of homage, yet this valley would never be filled. Their hands are stained with lawless deeds, and sinners consume and oppress everyone they wrongfully dominate, yet they will face destruction before the Lord of Spirits, be banished from his earth, and perish forever. All the angels of punishment were seen there, preparing the tools of Satan. Enoch asked the angel of peace who accompanied him, For whom are these instruments being prepared? The angel replied, These are prepared for the kings and mighty ones of the earth, so they may be utterly destroyed. Afterward, the righteous and elect one will reveal the house of his congregation, and they will no longer be hindered in the name of the Lord of Spirits. The mountains will no longer stand firm before his righteousness, but the hills will flow like fountains of water, and the righteous will find rest from the torment of sinners. Enoch looked and turned to another part of the earth, where he saw a vast valley engulfed in burning fire. He witnessed the kings and mighty ones being dragged and cast into this deep, fiery abyss. Enoch's eyes beheld the preparation of immense iron chains, heavy beyond measure, being made for these individuals. Enoch asked the angel of peace accompanying him, For whom are these chains being prepared? The angel responded, These chains are for the hosts of Azazel. They will be used to cast them into the abyss of total condemnation. 
Their jaws will be covered with rough stones, just as the Lord of Spirits has commanded. On that great day, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Phanuel will seize them and throw them into the burning furnace. This will be the Lord of Spirits' vengeance for their unrighteousness, for yielding to Satan and leading astray those who live on earth. In those days, the Lord of Spirits will send punishment. He will open all the water chambers above the heavens and the fountains below the earth. The waters above the heavens, representing the masculine, will merge with the waters below the earth, representing the feminine. Together, they will destroy all who dwell on the earth and those living at the ends of the heavens. When they recognize the evil they have done on earth, they will perish by these waters. Afterward, the head of days expressed regret, saying, I have destroyed all who dwell on the earth in vain. He swore by his great name, From now on I will not do this again. I will set a sign in the heavens as a pledge of good will between me and them forever, as long as the heavens are above the earth. This is my command. When the time comes for me to grasp them by the hand of the angels during the day of tribulation and pain, my chastisement and wrath will be upon them, declares the Lord of Spirits. Mighty kings of the earth, you will witness my elect one sitting on the throne of glory, judging Azazel, his associates, and all his hosts in the name of the Lord of Spirits. Enoch saw the hosts of the angels of punishment, armed with scourges and chains of iron and bronze. He asked the angel of peace, To whom are those carrying the scourges going? The angel answered, They are going to the elect and beloved ones to cast them into the abyss of the valley. In this valley, the elect and beloved will be gathered, their lives will come to an end, and their days of leading astray will be no more. In those days the Angles will return and move eastward towards the Parthians and Medes. They will incite unrest among the kings, rousing them from their thrones. These kings will burst forth like lions from their dens and wolves among their flocks, trampling over the land of the elect. But the city of the righteous will hinder their advance. They will fight amongst themselves and their right hands will turn against one another. Men will no longer recognize their brothers or sons, their fathers and mothers, leading to a slaughter with countless corpses and punishment that will not be in vain. In those days, Sheol will open its jaws, swallowing them up, and their destruction will be complete. Sheol will consume the sinners in the presence of the elect. And it came to pass after this that Enoch saw another host of wagons, with men riding on them, travelling on the winds from the east, the west, and the south. The noise of their wagons was thunderous. When this tumult occurred, the holy ones in heaven noticed it, causing the pillars of the earth to shift from their places. The sound echoed from one end of the heavens to the other in a single day. All beings will fall down and worship the Lord of Spirits. This marks the end of the second parable. And Enoch began to speak the third parable concerning the righteous and elect. Blessed are ye, ye righteous and elect, for glorious shall be your lot. The righteous will bask in the light of the sun, and the elect will dwell in the light of eternal life. Their days will be endless and the days of the holy will be without count. They shall seek the light and find righteousness with the Lord of Spirits. Peace will be theirs in the name of the Eternal Lord. And after this it shall be said to the holy in heaven that they should seek out the secrets of righteousness, the heritage of faith. For it has become as bright as the sun upon earth, and darkness has passed. There will be a light that never fades, and it will have no end. The darkness will be destroyed first, and the light of uprightness will be established forever before the Lord of Spirits. In those days, Enoch's eyes were opened to the secrets of the lightning and the lights, and the judgments they execute. 
they bring blessings or curses as the Lord of Spirits wills. And Enoch saw the secrets of the thunder and how when it roars in the heavens its sound is heard on earth. He witnessed the judgments executed, whether for well-being and blessing or for a curse, according to the word of the Lord of Spirits. And after this, all the secrets of the lights and lightnings were revealed to Enoch. They illuminate for blessings and fulfillment. In the year 500, in the seventh month on the fourteenth day of the month in the life of Enoch, a great quaking occurred. The heavens trembled, and the hosts of the Most High, as well as the angels, a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand, were deeply disturbed. The head of days took his seat on the throne of his glory, surrounded by the angels and the righteous. A great trembling seized Enoch. Fear overwhelmed him. His body weakened, and he fell upon his face. Michael sent another angel from among the holy ones, who raised Enoch up. When Enoch was raised, his spirit returned, for he had been unable to endure the sight of the heavenly host and the commotion shaking the heavens. Why are you so troubled by this vision? Michael asked him. Until today, the Lord has extended his mercy to those on earth, showing patience and long-suffering. But a time is coming when the power, judgment and punishment that the Lord of Spirits has prepared will descend upon those who defy his law, those who reject justice, and those who speak his name in vain. That day is already prepared, a covenant for the chosen, but a dreadful inquisition for the wicked. On that day his punishment will not be withheld, and the judgment will be so severe that mothers will perish with their children, fathers with their offspring. Afterward the judgment will be carried out with the Lord's justice and compassion. Michael continued, Two great creatures were set apart on that day. Leviathan, the female, was cast into the depths of the oceans to dwell near the water's springs. The male, Behemoth, was placed in a desolate wilderness called Duidain, east of the garden where the elect dwell. This is where Enoch's forefather, the seventh from Adam, was taken up, the first man created by the Lord of Spirits. Curious. Enoch asked one of the angels to reveal the power of these beasts, and to explain how they were separated on a single day, one thrown into the sea, and the other into the dry wilderness. You seek to know what is hidden, the angel responded. Another angel, guiding Enoch, began to unveil the mysteries of the cosmos, explaining the workings of the heavens, the depths of the earth, the ends of the firmament and the foundation of the world. He showed Enoch the chambers of the winds, and how they are divided and measured, each portal corresponding to its own power. The angel explained the movement of the moon, the divisions of the stars by name, and how everything in creation has its designated order. The angel spoke of the thunder, revealing the secret places where it rests, waiting for its roar. Thunder and lightning, though not one, are bound together. They move through the power of the Spirit and never part. When the lightning flashes, thunder soon follows, and the Spirit controls the pause between them. The storehouse of thunder, he said, is as vast as the sands, and each peal is restrained and released by the Spirit to move across the earth. The angle went on to describe the powerful Spirit of the sea, which pulls the waters back and forth across the mountains with unyielding strength. He also spoke of the spirits of frost, hail, snow, and mist, each governed by its own angel. The snow, he said, rises like smoke and contains a spirit of its own. Frost. The mist, unlike the others, dwells in its own chamber, glorious in both light and darkness, with an angel overseeing its course through the seasons. The dew, too, has its place at the edges of the heavens, connected to the chambers of rain. As the rain is released from its chamber, angels lead it forth, uniting it with the waters of the earth. Rain is a gift to nourish the earth, decreed by the Most High, and angels oversee its measure. As Enoch beheld these wonders, 
the angel of peace who accompanied him, said, These two great monsters, Leviathan and Behemoth, were prepared in accordance with God's greatness. In those days, Enoch saw angels being given long cords, with which they took to the skies and flew northward. He asked the angel with him why they had taken these cords and left. They have gone to measure, the angel answered. These cords will measure the righteousness of the chosen, strengthening their faith, so they may forever hold fast to the name of the Lord of Spirits. The angel continued, The righteous will dwell together, and these measures will reveal all mysteries, what lies beneath the earth, those lost in the desert, those devoured by beasts or by the fish of the sea. They will return, upheld by the elect one, for none will be destroyed before the Lord of Spirits. All of heaven received a command, and with one voice they praised the Holy One. Their words were wise, filled with life, and they blessed the Lord of Spirits with fire-like brilliance. The elect one was placed on a throne of glory to judge all the deeds of the holy in heaven, weighing their actions on a divine balance. As he lifted his face to judge the hidden paths and secret ways of the righteous, all of heaven cried out in unison, blessing and glorifying the name of the Lord of Spirits. On that day, the entire host of heaven, from cherubim to seraphim and the mighty angels of power, will raise their voices in one song of praise. They will exalt the Lord of Spirits with faith, wisdom, patience, mercy, justice, and peace. Blessed is he, they will declare, and may the name of the Lord of Spirits be praised forever. All the heavenly beings who never sleep will bless him, as will the holy ones in the garden of life, every spirit of light, and all flesh upon the earth. They will glorify and magnify his name beyond measure. For the mercy of the Lord of Spirits is vast, and his patience endures. All his works, and everything he has created, will be revealed to the righteous and the elect in his name. The Lord issued a command to the kings, the powerful, and the exalted ones of the earth, saying, Open your eyes and lift up your strength if you are able to recognize the elect one. The Lord of Spirits then placed the elect one upon his glorious throne, and righteousness poured forth from him. His mere words would strike down sinners, and all the unrighteous would be obliterated from his presence. On that day, the kings, the mighty, and all who rule the earth would stand in awe. They would gaze upon him sitting on his throne, where righteousness is judged, and no falsehood can be spoken before him. Suddenly, they would feel pain as intense as a woman in labor, suffering as she brings forth her child into the world. They would glance at one another, terror etched upon their faces, their hearts heavy with dread. Despair would seize them when they see the Son of Man seated on the throne of glory. The kings, the mighty, and all who possess the earth will finally acknowledge him, him who was hidden from their sight but ruled over all. They will bless, glorify, and praise the one who was concealed, preserved by the Most High from the beginning, and revealed only to the elect. In that moment, the chosen and the holy will gather before him, standing firm. The kings and the mighty, once exalted in their own eyes, will fall face down in worship. They will plead for mercy from the Son of Man, placing their hope in Him. Yet the Lord of Spirits will press them so harshly that they will flee from His presence, their faces full of shame, darkness deepening upon them. He will hand them over to the angels of punishment to exact vengeance for their oppression of His chosen ones. Their downfall will be witnessed by the righteous and elect, who will rejoice, for the wrath of the Lord of Spirits will rest upon the oppressors. His sword will be drenched in their blood. On that day, the righteous and elect will be saved never again to witness the faces of sinners and the unjust. The Lord of Spirits will dwell among them, and they will share meals with the Son of Man, rising and lying down in peace forever and ever. The righteous and the elect will rise from the earth, no longer burdened with sorrow. 
they will be clothed in garments of glory, garments of life bestowed by the Lord of Spirits, which will never age nor fade. Their glory will endure eternally before the Lord of Spirits. In those days, the mighty and the kings who once ruled the earth will beg for mercy. Delivered into the hands of the angels of punishment, they will cry out for just a little respite. They will long to fall down and worship the Lord of Spirits, to confess their sins before him. They will praise and glorify him, saying, Blessed is the Lord of Spirits, the Lord of Kings, the Lord of the Mighty, the Lord of the Rich, the Lord of Glory, and the Lord of Wisdom. His power is splendid and secret, spanning generations upon generations. His glory is eternal, and his righteousness cannot be measured. Then they will lament, if only we had rest to glorify and thank him, to confess our faith before his glory. But now we find no rest. We chase after it and grasp at nothing. Light has vanished from us, and we dwell forever in darkness. With deep regret, they will admit, we did not believe in him or glorify his name. Instead, we placed our hope in our kingdoms and our glory. Now, in our suffering, he does not save us. We find no peace, no respite for our confessions, though his judgments are true and just, showing no partiality. They will realize the futility of their lives, saying, We lived filled with unrighteous gains. Yet even that could not prevent us from being dragged down into the burdens of Sheol. Shame and darkness will cover their faces as they are cast out from the presence of the Son of Man. His sword will remain before them, driving them away, never to return. Thus the Lord of Spirits declares his judgment upon the mighty, the kings, the exalted, and those who rule the earth. Their fate is sealed before the Lord of Spirits. In that place other hidden forms appeared to Enoch. He heard the voice of an angel saying, These are the angels who descended to earth and revealed hidden things to mankind, leading them into sin 